singing a song of freedom. The wedding singer from Gaza brought up in a refugee camp, now an international star. The newly crowned Arab idol who has become a symbol of hope and unity. This is Inside Story. Hello there, welcome to the program. I'm Shuli Ghosh. Brought up in a refugee camp, the 23-year-old wedding singer from Gaza was the ultimate underdog. But on Saturday, Mohammed Asaf became a Palestinian hero when he was crowned winner of this year's Arab Idol. There have been celebrations across the West Bank and Gaza Strip. And at a time when Palestinians have little to celebrate, Asaf has, for now at least, united a divided people. Renee Aday has more. From student and wedding singer to superstar, Muhammad Asaf raised the hopes of the Palestinian people and in the end he followed through. A revolution is not just the one carrying the rifle. A revolution is the paintbrush of an artist, the scalpel of a surgeon, the axe of the farmer. This is something I consider to be logical. Everyone struggles for their cause in the way they see fit. Today I represent Palestine and today I'm fighting for a cause also through the art that I am performing and the message that I am sending out. A rare show of pride and national unity swept across the Palestinian territories. This was the scene in Gaza, crowds gathering to watch the results show. The world needs to know we are a civilized people. Unlike what some say about us, we are a people who like art, evolution, democracy. Everything is beautiful. We're also happy. He raised our heads. His voice is beautiful. We expected his victory. And in the occupied West Bank city of Ramallah, people turned out in their thousands to cheer on the 23-year-old singer. He even caught the attention of the Palestinian diaspora with his selection of songs reflecting the loss of his homeland. Asaf's voice has been described by one of the judges on the show as comparable to Abdul Halim Hafiz, an iconic singer in the Arab world. Asaf grew up in the Khan Yunus refugee camp in Gaza, a tough place to live because it's been the scene of direct fighting with Israel. Ordinary life for Palestinians living in occupation made it quite difficult for Asaf to even make it to the audition. He says he had to beg Hamas to let him leave Gaza. Then he was forced to bribe his way through the Egyptian border to get to Lebanon where the show is taped. Asaf then arrived to the recital hall too late for admissions. Another Palestinian contender apparently heard Asaf's voice and gave up his slot, handing Asaf what would become his ticket to stardom. <laughs> My feelings, I'm so overwhelmed. The feelings are, are so indescribable. The main feeling is pride, pride for the Palestinian people and proof to the world that the Palestinian people are alive. After the results were revealed, he was surprised with a different honor. The United Nations Relief and Works Agency named Asaf a goodwill ambassador for peace, becoming the first ever Palestinian to hold the title. The show might be over now, but the excitement and national pride is sure to continue as people wait to see and hear what Mohammed Asaf has to offer the future. Rene Aude for Inside Story. Well, for more on this, I'm joined by our three guests from Ramallah, Majid Bamia, a Palestinian diplomat. He's also active in several youth movements. Also from Ramallah, Omar Baghouti, co-founder of the Palestinian Campaign for the Academic and Cultural Boycott of Israel. And joining us from Gaza, Rana Baka, blogger and social commentator. Welcome to all three of my guests to the program. Uh, Rana, let me start with you because the, the, the reaction in Gaza has been quite extraordinary uh, to the winner of Arab Idol. Uh, he's a Palestinian hero. Absolutely, absolutely. I was uh, out yesterday in order just to see the celebrations on the streets and I must say that um, these celebrations were, were huge. Uh, everywhere, all over Gaza, uh, fireworks were set off, uh, people were literally dancing uh, on the streets, uh, cars honking, people singing and cheering for uh, Mohammed Asaf. So indeed, uh, Mohammed was able to bring joy to uh, the Palestinian people, not only in Gaza, but also in Ramallah and uh, 
uh, all over the West Bank, 48 and uh, Jerusalem. Uh, but also I think uh, there are other things that I would like to comment on uh, maybe later on during the problem with regard to uh, the Palestinian Authority's reaction uh, to uh, Mohammed uh, Assaf's um, Victory. Yeah, that, I mean, that's quite interesting because the Palestinian president, by all accounts, was uh, was calling round and urging all the Palestinian communities to uh, back Asaf. This is not the, the only thing that uh, Mahmoud Abbas uh, has been doing. He's been urging people to vote for Mohammed, Ab um, um, Mohammed Assaf, which I think uh, is a very good thing, uh, because I think that any president should be involved in the ordinary lives of the Palestinian people. But unfortunately, this is not what Mahmoud Abbas is all about, because obviously uh, he appointed uh, Mohammed Assaf as uh, the ambassador of goodwill. And uh, from my perspective, I think that they were, this, were, uh, this is an attempt to co-opt Mohammed Assaf and to just uh, distance him from uh, the people on the ground, the ordinary people. Uh, he's probably trying to turn him into a politician, into someone who would uh, just, you know, uh, uphold a uh, peace process uh, agenda. Uh, and this is uh, what uh, Mahmoud Abbas uh, has been doing and has done before, uh, which I think is, is not uh, a correct uh, thing to do, uh, given the fact that Mohammed Assaf has been chaired by the people themselves and not by the politicians who are now trying to, you know, use or take advantage of his victory and just pretend as if uh, as if uh, he won through them and only through their uh, you know their campaigns okay well there's obviously two strands of uh, thought there let's let's take each one uh, Majed let's start with this idea that um, he's a Palestinian he's become uh, a symbol of something amazing something successful um, for the Palestinian people who seem to be desperate for something good to, to, to believe in and, and, and to celebrate. We needed that uh, portion of joy that he was able to deliver. We needed also a face of unity, somebody capable of unifying us around uh, his voice. And I hope that this will be the prelude towards uni unifying our own voice uh, in the future and achieving Palestinian unity. I think he has managed to be one of these uh, symbols that we were maybe lacking in this period. And it's uh, important that this symbol comes from a young generation, a determined generation that had to face a lot of challenges, two wars against Gaza in recent years the siege and occupation that is still ongoing now for decades and uh, beyond all of that he was able to deliver the voice of Palestine in such a way in such a beautiful civilized manner that has reached the hearts and minds of the Palestinians but also the hearts and minds of all the region and maybe beyond okay but above and beyond that what Rana is saying is that he has become a symbol but a symbol that is now being hijacked, if you will, by the Palestinian Authority and, and used, politicized, if you will, uh, to, uh, to symbolize that the Palestinians struggle. Do you agree with that? No, I think many people like polemics. I, I don't think this is a, a time for such polemics. I think that the leadership has aligned itself with the popular feeling. There was a huge support, and you cannot imagine the support. What we have seen yesterday in the streets is just phenomenal. So it's aligned with itself, and I think it would have been criticized if it hadn't supported properly uh, Mohammed Assaf. And giving him uh, the uh, ambassador level and diplomatic privileges is a way to honor what he has achieved for Palestine. I think nobody can claim that he is not the best ambassador that we have had in these uh, few weeks. He was able, as I said, to deliver such an image of Palestine, such this willingness uh, of uh, being alive and being determined to fight despite all all the uh, hardships that we face and I think it's uh, something that the Palestinians feel very comfortable with. It's a normal situation uh, that he is honored as he is by the people and by the leadership. What do you think Omar? Um, because the question that, that, that's being asked in some quarters is did he win on talent alone or did he win because he's Palestinian? I think he won first and foremost because of his amazing unparalleled talent uh, and skills and musicality. Uh, every music critic said that he has such an amazing and unique voice and he proved that uh, one song after another and he sang all sorts of songs. Yes, being Palestinian won him some sympathy, some empathy, uh, but most importantly he did not win because of sympathy, he won because of solidarity, because of support and because of amazing by many people across the Arab world by his uh, talent. And I think another aspect
aspect of Muhammad Asaf that stands out is that he transcended being a victim. Yes, he's a victim, like most of our people. 69% of the Palestinian people are refugees, and Muhammad Asaf is a refugee from the Khan Yunus refugee camp. But he transcended that, reminding the world that we're not mere victims, we're actors, we resist colonization, apartheid, ethnic cleansing, by all means, including by cultural resistance, like Mahmoud Darwish did, like Edward Said did, like many Palestinian poets, musicians, theater, filmmakers, and so on have done. Hamad Asaf is a new face of Palestinian cultural resistance. And I would dare say he's a kind of a new Palestinian phoenix rising from the ashes of the Nakba of 1948. Oh, it's already been mentioned that uh, President Abbas has offered uh, Mohammed Asaf a, a diplomatic uh, position. We're not sure what that is. But uh, immediately after he won, the United Nations uh, Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees named him as a goodwill ambassador for peace. Spokesman Filippo Grandi said Mohammed's music is a universal language and speaks to all of us. How fantastic that a Palestine refugee from Gaza should bring us all together in this way. Um, Omar, is he, is he managing to unite the Palestinians in a way um, that endless attempts at talks haven't managed to do? I think it's not a matter of unifying the Palestinians. The Palestinian people are united. It's Palestinian political parties, Palestinian politicians that are not united. So there's a misnomer there in the question. It's not an issue of uniting the Palestinians. The Palestinians are united in so many ways. Uh, we're all struggling for our freedom, for our justice, for our self-determination. And Mohammed Asaf basically highlighted this unity of the Palestinian people. And not just the Palestinians in the occupied territories in Gaza and the West Bank and East Jerusalem, but also the Palestinian communities within the state of Israel and the Palestinian communities in the diaspora, in the Shatat. Uh, he managed to, to, to highlight that face of unity and cultural resistance of the entire Palestinian people. So it's not true that we are a divided people. We're very much a united people in our struggle for our rights. What do you think about that, Ron? I mean, Mohammed himself says that, that he's, he's fighting for a cause. Uh, and he... Uh, I mean, he's clearly captured the hearts and minds of Palestinian people, not just in Gaza and the West Bank, but uh, uh, wherever there are Palestinian communities across the world. I, I agree with what Omar said. Um, he managed to really uh, highlight the Palestinian unity that uh, that already exists all over uh, Palestine and also in the diaspora. Uh, I think that uh, Mohammed Asaf also brought the cause of Palestine uh, back uh, to art and to music, and this is something that we have been missing for a long time now. And Mohammed Asaf also it was obvious. I mean, his presence on on the stage, on Arab Idol stage, when he sang for Palestine. And when he um, when he said that that he would uh, he he gives the his um, you know um, he gives his his victory to to the refugees and uh, in the diaspora and to the Palestinian people because he, he did it sing quite a political was, song, didn't he? Uh, the, the, the song he sang in the final was uh, "Raise sang, Your Kafir," yeah. which is a nationalist anthem among Palestinians. Yes, he sang not only Ali al Kufiya but also ma many songs that highlight the Palestinian cause and that speak about uh, Palestine, about their return, about uh, the Israeli occupation and its daily injustices against the Palestinian people. And he brought that up in a way that was able to touch millions of people all over the world, uh, not only uh, Palestinians but, but Arabs all over the world and even beyond in, Euro in Europe and the United States. And this is something that we really need because I think that art, music has the power of really reaching out to all kinds of people all over the world and not only you know uh, specific people politicians or or um, or people who are only politically involved uh, Majid, do you agree um, that this illustrates the power of art as a form of expression as a form of resistance Yes, of course, and we've said that the Palestinian resistance, that the Palestinian struggle w was also uh, done through th such means as arts, and uh, we've had that in our history, and it's important to show new forms of art and new artists. I think it also highlights the potential of this new generation that needs to be further explored. Uh, I think we have a lot of talents uh, in this country and in the diaspora in 1948. We need to take care of them. They can be the ambassadors of Palestine. They can raise uh, the voice of the Palestinians. This is 
This shows the denied potential of the Palestinians that this occupation is trying to crush. And uh, Omar's image of the phoenix that was used in the Palestinian resistance is very important. We managed to resurrect each time the Israelis believe they have silenced us, we find our voice again. Each time they think that they have subdued us, we rise and uh, again and again uh, from the ashes. And uh, uh, Mohammed Assaf now has managed to become a phenomena, and I believe you will have uh, other people uh, in other talents that will be discovered because of the interest that he will generate. He was also able to show our story, the Palestinian story in CNN, in outlets, in magazines that never speak maybe of Palestine in this manner, had to speak about the siege, had to speak about the occupation, had to speak about the Palestinians being in solidarity with each other wherever they are. We were reminded that we are one wherever we are present, despite the fragmentation and despite the distances. Well, let me read my guests some of the uh, tweets that have been coming in about Asaf's uh, win. You can imagine that there's uh, many, many uh, tweets about this. Uh, Rami al-Haddad tweeted, uh, Palestinian Arab idol win unleashes an outburst of joy in a nation that didn't know joy for 66 long years. Saad took a different view. He tweeted, becoming Arab idol isn't a victory acknowledged by your oppressors. If you think it is, it isn't. And Furu added, Asaf, more dangerous to Israel than an Iranian bomb, a talented, sympathetic Palestinian who destroys stereotypes with music. And in fact, that idea about a Palestinian, a, a stereotype of a Palestinian being destroyed was repeated again and again. Uh, Omar, do you, uh, do you agree with that, that this is, um, this is something that has uh, maybe changed perceptions of Palestinians? It's not the only factor, but it's certainly Mohammed Asaf is one of the factors that are challenging the stereotypes about Palestinians, about Arabs, about Muslim communities, especially in the Western world. In the mainstream Western media, the Arab, the Muslim image, the Palestinian image has been totally dehumanized thanks to Zionist influence in the media, corporate media, uh, that is. People like Mohammed Asaf with their extremely uh, challenging, compelling talent first and foremost, and with their humanity, and without compromising on principles. Mohammed Asaf reminded his audiences every time where he belongs, where, what his identity is. So I never shied away from that identity. He never ran away. He never compromised on it. He reminded people of Palestinian martyrs and prisoners and those struggling for their freedom. Uh, yet at the same time, he had an amazing, amazing talent. And that's how he crossed over Israel's barriers, Israel's occupations, walls and, and, and minds and everything to reach the hearts and minds, as was said earlier, uh, to the rest of the world. And yes, that does uh, uh, help challenge this amazing uh, stereotype about the, about the Palestinians that, that has uh, uh, stayed uh, with us for quite some time. Do you, do you agree with that, Rana, that, 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 um, that there is a perception of Palestinians? You know, one, when one generally talks about uh, Palestinians, we're talking about the struggle, we're talking about occupation, we're talking about uh, restrictions, the blockade, etc., etc. And this is something that can put those issues to the forefront, but also, uh, you know, present a new face, a, a sympathetic face of, of a Palestinian. Yes, I agree. But at the same time, I think that uh, what um, that Mohammed Assad's talent is not new to the Palestinian people. We have many talents uh, within Palestine and in the diaspora that Israel uh, and governments uh, continue to crush um, in their communities. So I think that there are many talents, but you know uh, Israel continues to crush them to kill these uh, talents, whether whether psychologically or whether by directly shooting them down. Um, so yes, I, I think that uh, Mohammed Asaf was able to challenge uh, the stereotypes that Israel is trying to enforce as, uh, with the help of mainstream media, especially the Western uh, media uh, in that uh, regard. Um, so Mohammed Asaf uh, is a new face from Gaza, uh, someone uh, who was able to carry out uh, um, a new voice and a new, um, you know, a new message to, 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 the, uh, to the world, uh, which I think is not necessarily just uh, a message of peace because if we're talking about peace here we have so many definitions but who was able to tell uh, to tell the word in a language that everybody understands that the Palestinian people are resisting that the Palestinian people want to return this is a refugee from Gaza and this is uh, a refugee who is demanding his return and who uh, demands uh, the freedom of Palestinian prisoner uh, prisoners and in, in the middle of Beirut uh, calling calling for for um, for the for the people to to unite and 
to, okay. for the Arabs to unite and to fight the Israeli occupation. Uh, I'm interested in the Hamas uh, reaction to uh, Mohammed uh, Asaf. Um, the Hamas government in Gaza uh, generally disapproved of the Arab Idol contest, but of course it didn't try to stop people from watching the show. Uh, after Mohammed Asaf won the competition, one Hamas MP, Yaya Musa, referred to him as the ambassador for Palestinian art. And Hamas spokesman Fauzi Barhoum wrote on his Facebook page, in the end, Mohammed Asaf is a Palestinian youth from Gaza who suffered like us and lived under blockade for many years. Uh, Rana, do you, do you detect a, a, a change in position from Hamas when it comes to Arab idol. Hamas is, is known for not really going against the popular will anyway and I think that uh, any attempt by them to silence the people wouldn't have uh, they wouldn't have gone away with that because uh, as I said uh, yesterday was historic the numbers that took to the streets the, the celebrations the uh, the songs the the cheers that uh, we, we've been he hearing over over the past week are just they cannot they cannot be silenced by any authority and uh, to be honest uh, yesterday Day when the people celebrate, nobody cracked down on them, uh, neither Hamas or anybody else. In fact, I was out and I saw like policemen uh, waving back to people. And I think that this is uh, not a change in, in, in Hamas and in the way it deals with the people, but I think because, uh, because the people forced them to understand that this is someone who is loved by, by, by the people and that who is supported by everyone and that any attempt at silencing him would just bring them, you know, would bring them uh, well, I, contempt. I completely contempt agree. I, 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 I don't think Hamas uh, would have been able to stop those kind of celebrations. But uh, imagine if I can come to you, what I, what I was sort of getting at, I suppose, is that um, does it put Hamas in a slightly awkward position? Because uh, as I understand it, they've spent the last few weeks rounding up uh, young men who uh, don't have haircuts that they uh, approve of and have are uh, wearing low slung jeans. And presumably uh, most of the so the sort of youth who, who watch programs like Arab Idol would, uh, would, would not conform to the, the Hamas ideal. So does it put Hamas into a difficult position now? I told you I didn't, didn't want to polemic in, in such a beautiful day of unification. I'll just say that we need all Palestinian forces to focus on unity, to focus on the real struggles. Uh, I think uh, what we have witnessed in some cases of attention on things that are really uh, they're not obvious to us at all as being uh, priorities should shift the rights of the people needs to be respected by the uh, all Palestinian factions because we're asking for our rights from the Israeli uh, occupation and we're fighting for our rights against this Israeli occupation but let me say that Mohammed Asaf dedicated his win to the eternal leader of uh, Palestine uh, the martyr Yasser Arafat to the souls of the martyrs to the spirit of the prisoners and today we wake up and, and uh, the things have not changed on the ground the occupation is still there, the siege is still there, the wall is still there, the refugees are still awaiting their return. But we are stronger, we, are, uh, we have more spirit. Uh, he has given us also the power to envision ourselves continuing to struggle for our lives, for the freedom and the turn and independence of the Palestinians. So we should not overestimate what happened, what we should certainly not underestimate it. And I'm happy that everybody yesterday understood that this was a phenomenon that was positive for the Palestinian streets and for the Palestinian people. They understood the power of having such symbols of the victory of life uh, over uh, the imposition of death, of the victory of freedom over the siege and occupation, and of the victory of the uh, striving for justice over oppression. And I think he, ha he was able to embody that. And we need now to embody this spirit on the ground and to continue our struggle. I mean, the Palestinians should not stay in a frustrated situation. They are struggling in each village, in every town. They have okay. talented people throughout the world. And we need to empower and to mobilize our people in such a critical time. I just want to direct the last question to Omar because we are running out of time. Omar, I mean, uh, all of this, one would imagine, is quite daunting for a 23-year-old. He's very young and he's having all these expectations and symbolism heaped on his shoulders. It is absolutely a huge burden. I'm, I'm a parent of two musicians, and I know how it feels when they're even in a much lesser light than Mohammed Asaf. And, and now with all this light on him, all the limelight on him, of course, he, he, he must feel very intimidated and, and, and very overwhelmed. However, he knows that he has millions of Palestinians and other Arabs, and many internationals as well, supporting him, standing with him as a new voice for Palestinian rights, for Palestinian hope, and for Palestinian art and Palestinian culture, for Arab culture. 
culture. Uh, in fact, so he knows he's not alone. He knows we've got his back and he knows that we all stand with him in, his, in this new era where he will represent, he will be another representative of Palestinian and Arab culture to the world. I want to thank all my guests today for joining us uh, on this fascinating discussion. Majed Bamia, Omar Barghouti and Rana Baka. And that's it for this edition of Inside Story. Do give us your comments. Tell us what we should be covering. Email us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. I'm Shuli Ghosh. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Bye for now.